hello everyone and welcome back to my channel so i am back again with another full set and of course this full set is one of my favorite nail techniques to do which is ombre nails as always i went in and pushed the cuticles back and now i'm going in with my cuticle needle bit this was actually a new client and I was really happy with the end result. Some clients tend to have really, really, really tight cuticles. So what I would recommend is that you just take your time and try to get in there as much as you can. As you can see, this client here kind of has really, really tight cuticles. So what I'm doing is just getting up as much as I can with the bit. You know, you don't, you don't, oh, I'm sorry, guys. You don't want to force it. Just do what you can, and then you can go ahead and clean the rest up with the cuticle nippers as I'm doing right now. I know some people can sometimes be a little scared when it comes to nipping cuticles because some people tend to bleed even when you have not nipped excessively. So then I know if they're bleed, if they start to maybe bleed and then you haven't done your prep, it can be kind of like nerve wracking. But what I would say is what helped me with my fares was just starting off slow. So when I first started nipping cuticles, I would go really slow because I mean, it's better to be safe than sorry. You can speed up on other parts, which can be like filing or applying your product. But certain parts, I would recommend you just take your time. You know, we all want to make sure that the client is done in a timely manner, but you don't want to do that and then risk hurting them. You know, things are going to happen. It's, in, it's inevitable, but you know, you want to try to avoid it as much as you can. So as you can see, I clipped away her cuticles and now I'm going in with the sanding band. You're going to see me go over like this ring finger a bit more because there is still a little bit of product and i always just instead of forcing it off with like a cuticle pusher by scraping the nail i just use the sanding band to remove that last bit of product so i did want to talk about a certain topic i wanted to like drop this in there randomly because i want to know what you guys think so i'm talking from obviously a nail tech perspective um also there's a client perspective and there's a nail tech perspective but i wanted to talk about how most newer nail techs i know this is a struggle because it was a struggle for me in the beginning you will not have a hundred percent easy clients every time like there are some clients that'll be i guess basically you can say like family and they'll you know you'll vibe with them they vibe with you and it would be you know a fun time every time you have an appointment with them but then there are some clients that are maybe nice they may be kind people but it's just that they may micromanage or they may try to dictate certain things to you but i would say if you have ever experienced anything like that, to just understand that there is a respectful and a professional way to politely tell them, hey, you know, the way that you do this makes me feel a little uncomfortable because I feel as if most nail techs are artistic people, so we're very creative and you know, we're in our best realm when we can be creative, do what we like to do. And some people may not understand that because they may not be that type of creative person that you are. They may be so more logical. Who knows? But the point I'm trying to get at is that not every client is going to be easy to deal with, especially if it's a new client. You have to understand that people go to a lot of different places to get their nails done and they could have been traumatized by like a nail drill, cutting them deeply or basically getting an infection. Like who knows the past scenarios that have happened to this 
said person's fingernails or nails. So they may come to you, and this is to my new nail text, they may come to you and literally still be traumatized from those experiences. And you know, for that first appointment, it may be a little uncomfortable because they just want to make sure that that is not gonna happen to them again. So I would, any the advice I would give to new nail techs are just, you know, if you find a person that may be like that, don't judge them and don't be so quick to get rid of them just see if it keeps happening so like i said if the first time they come and you know they're asking a few questions they're a little skeptical on certain things just do what you can to make them comfortable now if we're on the third fourth fifth appointment and this person is still making you as the nail tech feel uncomfortable even though you have displayed to them that hey you know you can trust me i'm not this i'm not those people that hurt you in the past you you know this should be in like a new slate. If you have done that and they're still making it uncomfortable for you, that is when you should think about, okay, maybe this relationship is not going to work out. Maybe I'm not the tech for you because obviously as a creative, you can't do your best work if someone's like commenting and micromanaging your every move. Most people are aware that you do your best work when you just let someone be them of course you know we're not talking when it about when it comes to shape colors and such like that of course you're going to communicate about those things but once i have given you like once a client has given you the shape they want the color they want when you're questioning such things like did you like are you sure you put the primer on right are you sure you need to drill it up why are you using that bit and not this bit all of that is like a distraction for the I mean, sorry, an inconvenience for the nail tech because now you're having to answer all these questions and you're in the zone, but you don't want to come off, you know, rude, obviously, but it's like, I'm trying to focus on getting your nails right and doing what it is that I need to do because you're paying for this service, but you're asking me all these extra questions. So even for clients out there, um, if you're now let's do sorry now let's do the client perspective right if you're a new client like i said previously from the nail tech perspective you may have been through a lot of traumatizing events whether it was at a nail shop or it was a private nail tech either or and you're just when it comes to your first appointment you're just you know a little skeptical because you don't know if the person is going to be rude or have an attitude um, if their implements are clean, there's a lot of things that the client is also worrying about because like I said, past experiences. So clients, if you find a nail tech that you like, you know, maybe after the first time, if they have shown you that they're professional, they don't have an attitude, they seem to be an upstanding person and they seem to care about their business a lot. Don't be that person to nitpick about every little thing. Be that person to be direct and say, this is the shape I want. This is the color I want. This is even if what's what I've noticed is good for me. Inspo pictures. If you're a client, make sure you show that new nail tech your inspiration so that they can really see the way that you actually like your nails to look. It may not come out obviously exactly like the picture because everyone's nail beds are different, but it will give that nail tech an idea of what you like. So yeah, for both perspectives, we gotta I feel like it's very important to understand the business professional side of it and then also the client's perspective also like i never feel like it's okay to have an argument with a client i feel like there's always there should always be a way to resolve the situation in a respectable manner for example like let's say a client breaks their nail or something comes off this is for Sorry, we went back to a nail tax perspective. The person that has the business and does the nails. So if a client comes to you and your policies may be a few days after you have to pay, you gotta eval you have to evaluate the situation in my opinion. 
prior to making just like a harsh decision what i'm what i'm really noticing about nail techs today some people can be very confrontational like yes i'm all by abiding by policies and you know sticking to your rules but some things you just can't be so blatant and straightforward with for example like if someone broke their nail it depends on the situation so a nail break can be on the nail tech side and it can also be the client's fault so i feel like communication needs to be top notch when you're a business owner or an entrepreneur like you're not just going to assume that because the client well as a nail tech you should not assume that the client's nail broke because of them only especially if you're a newer nail tech so now let's let's look at this in a different perspective again if you're a new nail tech you're learning your foundation when i i, I would consider a new nail tech being anyone that hasn't been doing nails more than two years the first two years you're focusing on your foundation you're focusing on what products work what products don't you're trying to basically build up your retention you're trying to get your retention to last i mean sorry for your nails to last as long as possible that's the goal for any nail tech quality right so if you're a new nail tech let's just give an example you've been doing nails about six months and then there's a client that comes to you and says, hey, you know, my nail actually broke two days later. Um, can I go ahead and come and, you know, get that corrected? You can't assume that like right away. Oh, my God. What did the person do to break their nail? You got to think about, hmm, did I? maybe not build my apex right did i not make the nails thick enough in in basically in comparison to the length of the nail you have to look at all all of these things from different different perspectives before just going to the client and saying hey i just did your nails like how did they break so let's just say now the client responds and says um, I'm not sure what happened. I was just doing my daily functions and they just broke that. Sorry, that one nail just broke. It's not going to if you actually like this person and this is not a person that usually, you know, complains or I don't know. It just seems to be a very straightforward person. I would say as a newer nail tech, you should definitely go ahead and fix the nail. Of course, charge. I mean, if it's after your period you know your grace period you should definitely charge but that can be a learning lesson for you because obviously once the client comes to fix their nails they are you know they're going to tell you more about what happened and from the them explaining the situation you can then see hmm maybe this may have been my fault or maybe this may have been theirs but for example a nail tech that has been doing nails Sorry, another example. A nail tech may have been doing nails maybe five plus years. And let's just say two days later, someone has a nail broke. Um, a nail break, sorry. Obviously, a nail tech with five years experience has seen a lot and done a lot. Um, I can speak for myself. I know when something is my fault and when it's not. Because I've experienced so many different clients, so many different nails, so many different mistakes that I know when something is my fault. And I know how my nails last. So seeing that I've been doing nails for a very long time, you can't come and tell me what basically what my quality is because I know I know my nails. You, I'm sure we've all been there where it's like in the beginning, something breaks or something lifts or whatever the case, mostly lifting you know that it's your fault because you're still learning. Maybe you didn't seal the cuticle right, or maybe you didn't, um, I don't know, maybe you didn't apply primer and maybe you forgot because it's easy to forget when you're new to apply primer. So you're not going to be able to come and tell me a nail tech of five years that your nail just broke just like that. No. So now a scenario that I have experienced 
because one thing too a lot of nail techs take a lot of pride in their work like they take their time they spend hours so you're making sure you cross all your t's and dot all your i's so there's some nail techs that will definitely definitely say like no something else had to happen for this situation to happen with your nails this is this just didn't happen so for me the most i've had occur was like a top coat not um curing properly that's a very easy thing to happen like sometimes our light bulbs on our lights aren't working on our uv lights aren't working and we don't even realize but if you i know most nail tests can relate when i say if the thumbnail doesn't dry properly in the light you have to literally literally you have to literally watch the client put their hand in and ensure that the light is hitting the thumbnail sometimes. But yeah, guys, so I wanted to just come on and just talk about that for a second because it is so important as a business owner and as an entrepreneur to be professional and not have a bad attitude. If you do not like the way that a client may be after about two to three sessions, you have every right to not service that person because maybe your personalities just don't blend and that's okay because no one is trying to be stressed out, strung out, annoyed. No one's trying to have that, you know, unnecessary, those unnecessary emotions going on in their life if they don't have to. So it's a professional way that you can text the client and just say hey i really don't think this relationship is going to work out but i can refer you to another tech in the area maybe or just don't even refer anyone and just say hey you know i just don't think you know it's going to work out i'm so sorry but i just don't feel comfortable anymore servicing you and that's also fine too the most important thing i believe for creatives is protecting our mental state you want to be happy you want to do the nails you love to do and not have to feel like you have this burden of dealing with someone that's just difficult and that goes for the clients too if your nail tech you know if you feel like your nail tech is always late if your nail tech is always you know you feel like cold and mean towards you you do not need to sit there and patronize someone that's being rude to you or mean of course, everyone goes through things in life, but there's something called communication that's very important. So even me as a nail tech, if I'm feeling down or I'm feeling sad or I'm tired, anything like that, I always, before I even start, we when, when my client sits down, I'm like, girl, I am so tired. So just in case my energy is off, they know why. They don't have to guess Oh, maybe she doesn't want to do my nails. Maybe they're going to come out looking bad. Maybe they're going to this. Maybe they're going to that. She doesn't She doesn't have to guess because I'm letting you know right now, up front, before we start, I'm not feeling too good today. So I'm going to do my absolute best to obviously give you what you want. But I may not be as chatty. I may not be as bubbly as you usually see me because I'm going through something right now. And that's okay. So yeah, guys, I'm not going to talk your air off to death because listen, one thing about me, I can talk. I can talk, 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 talk all day. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, and if you enjoyed the little chat, um, please comment, like, subscribe, let me know what you think. But I really appreciate all my viewers. I really appreciate you watching my video. You do <laughs> You didn't have to, but you did. Thank you. So I will see you guys in the next one. And I will come in and comment, you know, further in.